Welcome back. We've cleared the decks here today for Mike Sexton, who we'll be talking with in a second. But first, welcome to Dish of the Day, sponsored by Omaha Sweet Corn. Today's dish, chicken Caesar salad. Yours for only six dollars. Mmm, that's good. Back with Mike Sexton. Glad to have him here. Mike, let's talk about golf a little bit. I mean, <laughs> golf and poker are a little bit of similar, and golf has played a big part in your life, both as a sport and as a betting proposition. Yeah, a lot of poker players like to play golf, and I'm one of them. And certainly, it's fun to see a lot of poker players get out on the golf course because most of us aren't that good of golfers yet. You know, they still like to bet high. And a couple of months ago, Howard Letterer told me a story about a match he played with Huck Seed against you and Doyle Brunson. He, he was on the losing end. How did it feel to be on the winning end of that match? I'll tell you, that was my greatest day ever on the golf course. We played a very serious golf match, actually for 800000 in one round of golf. And it was pretty astonishing. Doyle was staking me, of course. That's how I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good move. <laughs> yeah. And Doyle and I played Huck and Howard. The difference was we got to play from the ladies' tees, and they played from the men's tees back on the back. That was our spot. That was our edge, and it paid off for us. We ended up winning two bets for the day, so it was very exciting. I mean, there was tons of people just following along in golf carts watching. Didn't they close the whole course? Uh, actually, it was the hottest day of the summer when we played our match, and literally we had like 50 carts following us around the golf course. It did look like the PGA Tour out there, you know, but it was just a, and a tremendously exciting match, very close match. Actually, Doyle and I were very fortunate to come out on top. Well, people didn't believe Doyle would be able to get around the course, did they? <laughs> he didn't get out of the cart very much, I can tell you. <laughs> you guys were playing what's it called, you? a scramble yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, we played a scramble where we both hit a tee shot, yeah, and then you play the better tee shot, and then you hit it up to the green, you play the one closest to the hole, et cetera. That's what a scramble is. That's the match that we played. So if I'd had any kind of drive at all, Doyle would never get out of the cart. And even amazingly, we're paying for this much money, $160,000 Nassau with one automatic press aside meaning you could lose five bets up to 800,000. <laughs> but we'd have, I'd have like a four-foot putt or something like that on the green. And most of the time in these scramble matches, you want to get behind the guy who's putting first, right. you know, so you get a good read on his line. Well, Doyle wouldn't even get out of the cart. He'd say, <laughs> he'd say go down there and make that putt. I, I don't even want to get out of the cart. Somehow, amazingly, I made every putt from that distance. I don't know how I did it to this day. Well, he was paying the money. He can yeah. sit in the cart to be like... <laughs> Well, obviously, there are a lot of nervy putts there, but Mike, if you had to take, or someone had to take, a six-foot putt for your life, which poker player would you put in there? Yeah, well, I'll tell you a funny story about that. The high-stakes players were talking about that one day, and they were sitting around there, and they says, you know, if you, if you had to have a guy make a 10-foot putt for you, and if he missed, you'd be killed, who would you want to make that putt for you? I think now, we're talking myself. all the putters in the world. <laughs> right. And they started around, the first, and the first guy said Jack Nicklaus, and the next guy said Ben Crenshaw, and then a the guy said... Tom Watson. And now I came to Doyle Brunson. And Doyle looks up and he says, Puggy Pearson. <laughs> Puggy I all looked at him and said, Puggy Pearson? He said, are you crazy, Puggy? He said, I'll tell you one thing. He said, Puggy's the greatest putter I've ever seen. He said, I'll tell you one thing about Puggy. He said, he might not make it, but you'll get a good roll for your life. He won't dog it. You know? <laughs> and that was, that was really fun. <laughs> Well, we've got a little challenge we like to do here on a poker show called the Knee Trembler. It's a, it's a putt up in our putting green upstairs, and uh, it's a six-foot putt. It's not for your life, but, uh, and it's, uh, not, it's not with a great putt. <laughs> but we'll hope we, we, might spice it up we want to give it a try a little later in the show, and, uh, and we'll see how, uh, how your form is up there. All right. <laughs> we'll see how Mike does with the Knee Trembler in a little while, and we'll be back with Mike. But first, a segment you all have come to know, anticipate, and love. Park Parkinson's Off the Wall. This is one of the nights we look forward to an Off the Wall. We get to take the guy that you have voted for off our wall of fame. The guy you like least. But first, there's a little unfinished business. People have still been very distressed about the Howard Letterer situation. We're getting emails every day. And we're frankly, even though we, th we didn't think it was fair, but we're getting fed up of it. But Las Vegas being Las Vegas, our producers come up with a bit of a solution. If a hundred of you feel that strongly about it and give us one dollar each, just one dollar, we'll put Howard back on the wall and we'll forget it ever happened. If not, we'll give whatever you send in to charity anyway. And let that be the end of it. No more emails, please. Money only. Now to the fun end of things. 
We've been counting the votes here all week, and despite a late run from Harry Dimitro, mainly due to a lot of block votes from the Las Vegas dealers, and who can blame them, he did behave like a complete prat the other day, but he still didn't get enough votes to catch one of our favourites here and off the wall, the 2002 world champion, Robert Varconi. He's the guy you voted off, and may I say that it's quite a good choice. I was one of the lucky ones to be present when he took out Phil Helmut's ace king with the Queen 10 during that tournament, and it was absolutely hilarious. I'd forgive him anything for that, but you weren't all there to see it, so good choice. Just keep sending your votes in to this email address. Mike. You were a player for a long time. Now you're in the business side of the commentary. You don't get that much time to play anymore. Do you miss it? Uh, actually, if I wasn't a commentary guy on the World Poker Tour, for example, I would be playing in World Poker Tour events because I still love to play, especially the big-time tournaments. You know, I'm very fortunate that I don't have to grind out for a living anymore like I did for like 25 years. You know, we had Only to play 25? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're this, we're telling the truth on this show. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, so I'm fortunate I don't have to do that. But still, I thoroughly enjoy the big time tournaments, the competition involved with it, and all. And, and I would be playing, and I still am playing when opportunity presents itself. Well, did you get to play in this PPT? Um, Actually, I got to play. There were five PPT events. I only got to play in a couple of them. I had obligations in the rest of them, so I didn't even get a chance to play in a lot of those. The WPT is still the biggest one. I mean, Park, you know, you fly over from Europe nearly every month now to play in it. I mean, this has really got the, the eye of the players, doesn't it? Well, I mean, the WPT is great, but I, I'm a sickie. I prefer the PPT. <laughs> you know, they might have a $6 million event in the WPT, and the PPT is uh, half a million, but the PPT is uh, it's so much fun. You know, like the first PPT thing I played was in Foxwoods, and uh, I'm at this table. I'm in between uh, Seidel and Negriano, and they broke the table. I thought, well, that's great. They put me at another table, and I'm stuck in between. There's four world champions. And, uh, I was stuck in between Doyle and... Uh, Dan Harrington, and across the table, there's Brad Doherty and Huck C. Yeah. <laughs> and I managed to get knocked out by Ron Rose. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, this is the ultimate in poker. I mean, you, 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 you know, you can play these, yeah. some of these events and you're playing with you know, six guys from the net and two pros and all of that, but I mean, when you're playing against the best, it's just, uh, it's just taking the whole thing to a new level. I mean, it's, it's brought the fun, right? You, you, you can't have more fun playing poker than that. Feel the same way, Mike? Do you get fired up for the for the, the the big the big bracelets, the prize pools, or the players you're playing against? Well, it is fun, like he says, to play against the best players. And in the PPT, certainly, it's supposedly like the top 200 players in the rankings, both in America and overseas. So you get quality players at every single table, and players do enjoy it. But honestly, I prefer the bigger prize pools, the World Poker Tour. I prefer because. You know, I still am the guy that believes poker is, should be available for everyone to play and everyone to enter. And when that little guy makes it to the final table, you know, they qualified online or that won a satellite to get in. And where he's playing for over a million dollars and literally it's a life changing thing for this guy if he happens to win this tournament. You know, and you see the pressure packed decisions and you can just feel that when you're watching the show. You know, and that's why that show is so popular because it's reality TV at its finest. It's real people that have put up real money that are really playing for millions of dollars and literally every decision they make could be a million dollar decision. And when an amateur gets there and has a shot to do it, it's exciting. Well, you just mentioned little guys who all of a sudden become big names. Parg, we have a very special guest here tonight. I don't know, do you know who this is? It's one of the biggest names in poker, a guy you know very well. Well, he's my nemesis. <laughs> no, I, I, I've played the, the big tournament in, in this event uh, six times. In 1999, I got knocked out by Noel Furlong. In 2001, I got knocked out by Daniel Negriano. The other four years, I got knocked out by the same guy every year. And every year I go home, I get the whole year to think about how to play the guy. I come back the next year, he's changed. His whole game plan has changed. He just, I just can't beat the guy. We're very lucky to have him. Please welcome a man who has rewritten the theory of the game. In his first ever television appearance, the one the pros fear, it's the unknown poker player. <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> Mr. Unknown, good to have you here. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. Mike Parg, unknown poker player. <laughs> Welcome. Mike, 
They talk about logos a lot. You were one of the first guys in poker to wear a logo years ago when you were with LaMode. And now there's a bit of a dispute. Logos at the World Series of Poker, sponsorships. What should be happening at the World Series? Well, certainly I believe that it is going to come into play, that players are going to be allowed to wear logos like PGA Tour players eventually. The problem is the ones that are going to pay the money that's worth it for players to wear, for the most part, are online poker sites. And unfortunately, at this particular time, since they can't advertise on the program, you know, they're not allowed to wear these logos and do essentially infomercials on television for these big-time poker tournaments now. Hopefully, we're going to come to a spot at some point in history before too long where a compromise is made, where we can start wearing logos, where players can get supplemented by their income, and it'll, it'll be great for the players, no question about it. But you know, Jesse, May, now is uh, show business, the poker, no? And um, uh, for example, everybody know me, I sign autograph all the time, they recognize me. But uh, the thing that made me angry now is, uh, now is show business. All of a sudden, all these celebrities, um, Pena Feliki and uh, the Spider-Man, he come in. Yeah? I, I want to well, say to point. these guys, yeah. well, I, I don't put on, I am just so good looking as the Spider-Man. I don't go on the movies, try to make a movie. Why he come and play my game, eh? Mike, we, we go back 25 years, we've been playing, eh? Why all of a sudden all these celebrities want to kind of take it away from us, eh? Well, certainly it's great to have celebrities in our game. That's what brings media exposure to poker. Yes, yeah, but you, are the, to have you them, are the celebrity. Why we need these? Well, we have to have celebrities for any sport to succeed. You need celebrities, and certainly we need guys like you, Mr. Unknown. You're one of the top celebrities we have. Well, I mean, speaking of celebrities, Mike, have you been surprised with how well some of these celebrities have been playing? Ben Affleck won a tournament. Uh, Toby Maguire's made the money. Uh, no question about it. And these guys are real players. I happen to play in a private game with these guys, and I can tell you they are real poker players that can sit down with big-time players and, and hold their own. Certainly, Toby Maguire, a terrific poker player. You're going to see him in the final table at some of the main championships events. As you mentioned, and Ben Affleck, as you said, won a $10,000 buy-in tournament at the Commerce Casino. So that was against top-quality pro players. It's not easy to do. Are they presenting a challenge for you, sir? Well, they, they, they can be lucky one or two times, these guys, but uh, we've been playing a long time. We, we, this is our game. They should be acting. <laughs> you guys have played it a lot, the three of you, a lot of WPT events or watched them. What's your vote for best WPT performance? Well, the best World Poker Tour performance, honestly, the guy who made it the easiest, who won the easiest, in my view, went wire to wire, so to speak, at the final table right on down, and just mowed him down, was David the Devilfish Elliott. I believe his win was the most dominating victory that we've had on the World Poker Tour. And certainly, uh, we've had a number of uh, top quality performances. Uh, that was Tunica the first, the, in the first season. In Tunica the first season. Have, have you played much with the Devilfish, sir? Yes, yes, he's another very lucky guy. Um, <laughs> he he had a couple of results here and there, but uh, in that same tournament, I think my performance was better. I, 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 he was very lucky against me a couple of times. Uh, I put a bluff on, he can't read me. He find me very hard to read, but uh, he got lucky. So, uh, yeah, Devil Fish, I know him. Well, let me ask Mr. Unknown a question. You know, you wear your paper bag, of course, so it is difficult to read you. But what about poker players who wear sunglasses? Well, I was going to say, this is unbelievable. Where are the sunglasses? Is, uh, they should come out from behind the sunny glasses. Is, uh, what are you afraid of? Eh? You look into my eyes. They, they, think they, they, they think they can hide and cover it up. I don't think you should be allowed these sunny glasses, no. Oh, yeah. you got a point there. We agree there, Mr. Unknown. I'm on your side. This is the one thing Daniel Nigriani, he, he said this. He's good. And now he wears them. Yeah, he wears them now, eh? and the beard, too. But you know what that means, <laughs> Mr. Unknown? You're going to have to cut bigger holes in those eyes so people can read you better. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to win the World Series this year. It's in the bag, you know? <laughs> it's in the bag. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, your, your record in the World Series event, sir, is unmatched. Unbelievable. Do you think the pros, the, the other names, Mike, have to come up with a new strategy to beat, to beat gentlemen? You, uh, can't, you can't come up with a strategy. I tried to explain that earlier. He changes his game every year. I mean, I, you know, this guy knocks you out of the tournament, you spend 12 months, this is not going to happen again. The next year, there he is. You don't even know, even know it's him until he's knocked you out. He's, he's, he's fantastic. You know, I think now I am already in the World Series winning the best overall here. Every time you look, unknown here, unknown there, every points every day. Sometimes three or four times in, in one tournament. It's been a great show. Thanks for coming on. And my thanks also, of course, to Parag and Jackie. We'll see you next time. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint.